From the banks of the Colorado River in Lake Mead to the homes and businesses in Southern Nevada, welcome to Water Smarts, the podcast pumping from the heart of Las Vegas, where we engage with the experts who keep the water flowing throughout Southern Nevada. I'm Bronson Mack. And I'm Crystal Zelke. From how we treat it, deliver it, use it, protect it, and conserve it, the Water Smarts podcast is all about water in Southern Nevada. We hope to make you a little smarter about the one thing that keeps us all connected, water. Hey, Crystal, how you doing today? I'm good, Bronson. Hooked up through Teams. I don't know if everybody else uses Teams, but that's our program that we use for work through Microsoft. And sometimes it's a little, I don't know, difficult to use. It doesn't always go as planned, but I guess that's technology, right? Oh my gosh, that is technology. Crystal, can I just share with you that I am, like, I love technology, of course. I love how it makes things easier sometimes, but sometimes it kind of gets in the way. I mean, just at the base level, Crystal, I'll just confess that I am one of those people who, when I try and log into anything, it doesn't matter what it is. When I try and log in, it never works the first time. I'm the guy who tries to keep the same username, but I have different passwords because I understand the cybersecurity element. And I keep passwords saved in my phone so I can go back to them. But even then, Every time I try and log into something and put my password in, the response is always, nope, sorry, Bronson, not today. I have to change my password almost every time I log into stuff. And then sometimes, Crystal, I'll immediately log out after changing my password and try and log back in with my brand new password. It's perfect. I know I got it right, and it still won't allow me access. I just think I am just kind of a fool when it comes to logging into stuff and and using technology. Oh, I 100% am with you. I, I'm just as terrible. And then I get more frustrated when I have to change it and then start over. And then what about, do you ever forget to put your password, your new updated password in your phone? Cause I do that. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Quite honestly, if I can't unplug it and just plug it back in to make it work, I'm kind of dead in the water. <laughs> Yep, I completely understand. Well, thank goodness we work for an organization that's way ahead of us when it comes to technology. The Southern Nevada Water Authority is state of the art when it comes to water as a whole for Southern Nevada water resources, our pipelines, our infrastructure. Yeah, right. And fortunately, people like me aren't running the IT department. As we look at technology, especially within the water sector, it is pretty impressive when you consider the amount of technology that is there that is needed in order to move water to point A to point B. And today we're actually going to learn a little bit more about technology in the water sector because the Southern Nevada Water Authority was one of the founding members of an organization called Water Start. And it's a nonprofit It's actually really interesting in what it's doing to marry up new technologies and new inventions with the water industry to help ensure that the challenges associated with delivering water are met. And today, here to talk to us about all of this cutting-edge technology and testing for the water industry, we have Dave Johnson, Deputy General Manager of Operations for the Southern Nevada Water Authority and the Las Vegas Valley Water District. And to give a little bit of background on Water Start and its program, how it works and what it does, we've got Nate Allen, Executive Director of Water Start. Nate and Dave, welcome to the Water Smarts Podcast. Hey, Bronson. Thanks for having us. Great to be here. Thanks, Bronson. Well, thanks so much for joining us here today. Nate, I think we're going to start with you. Could you just give our listeners a little bit of background and some idea about Water Start? what it is, how it works, what you do. Could you also just explain a little bit about your organization's mission? Absolutely. So Water Start's mission is to accelerate the deployment and adoption of new water technologies. We were really established because there is a need for the means to make it easier for water agencies like SNWA and other members of ours to try new things, but do it in a way where the ratepayers don't have to assume all the costs and risks of deploying new technologies. And so we were set up back in like 2015, and a core part of what we do 
is we use our not-for-profit status to go raise funds that contribute to our members to help them actually do pilot projects. So we find really interesting new technologies to address nagging challenges in the water industry. We help try to get those solutions out, installed, and, and proven to see whether they can resolve some of those significant challenges. Wow. So just on a follow-up there, you said that you, you're looking at those nagging challenges and finding the solutions. I find that pretty interesting because sometimes within the water industry, we have a solution presented to us and maybe <laughs> there isn't necessarily that challenge there. And so you're trying to kind of fit a new technology or a yeah. new process. Is that a little bit different for Water Start to kind of take that approach of starting with the challenge and then finding the solution? It is kind of unique for us to work that way. There's a few different reasons why we do that. Obviously, there's a lot of new technologies. All of us are are negotiating those on a daily basis at home, right? Figuring out what artificial intelligence means in our house and, you know, virtual reality and augmented reality. And there's, there's lots of buzzwords that the water industry kind of gets inundated with suggesting that, hey, you know, you guys should do this too. It's complicated, right? When you're running a big water agency with a lot of people, it's complicated to decide how will those things really make it easier, more cost-effective to deliver reliable water service to the ratepayers. And so the approach we take is to sit down with everybody from like, you know, Dave's position down to the operators and kind of talk with them about, hey, what's keeping you up at night that you really need? And they might name a challenge they have that we could address with artificial intelligence. But the only way that we can really reliably find a fit is to really understand what the challenge is that they have. So Dave, the the way Nate explains it, it sounds like Waterstart really supports practical, cost-effective, real-world research. Why did Southern Nevada Water Authority help found WaterStar, and how how does it help the water industry as a whole? Well, that's a great question, Crystal. Let me give you a little bit of background on the Southern Nevada Water Authority and our situation, and it'll be really easy to see why WaterStar and the partnership we have is so important. Now, the Water Authority provides water to seven out of every 10 Nevadans, not just our locality, but if you think about seven out of 10 people in the state of Nevada on really a very limited supply of water. We've got about 90% of our water comes from the Colorado River. And as you know, we have been in drought for over 20 years. We only get as an allocation 300,000 acre feet worth of water, which is the smallest of all the states that receive water off of the river. And so Really, innovation has been woven into the fabric of our organization because we've had to be innovative because of the situation that we face. And what WaterStart really does for us is we noticed that there were a lot of water users and a lot of water utilities in the state of Nevada that were all trying to accomplish the same goal, be able to actually achieve more using less water. And so we partnered with those other entities to help form WaterStart. And what they do for us is really help to define what our challenges are. Take a look and say, what problems do we need to solve within the Water Authority to make that resource go that much farther, to be able to operate more efficiently or effectively? And then once we determine what those priorities are, WaterStart helps us to go out there and look in the community and find out okay, what innovations or what inventors are out there that may have a solution for us to be able to accomplish that? And then WaterStart provides funding to be able to come alongside that innovator or invention or innovative solution, and then helps us all the way through the implementation stage. So really, if you think about WaterStart, you can think about them in terms of really helping to accelerate the adoption of innovation, because we just don't want to be out there trying things. We want them to end up resulting in an installation in our facility that actually meets the need and makes us more effective. And a lot of times, other utilities will look at what we have done and how we've partnered with WaterStart to be able to implement these solutions and get really interested in seeing how it worked for us. And hopefully, it'll be a situation that causes them to not have to reinvent the wheel, not have to pilot again, not have to go through that whole process again, but learn from what we've done and be able to implement it in their utility. 
because really one of the things I love about the industry that we're in is it's non-competitive, right? We aren't trying to compete against other water utilities or other water users. We have the ability to share our information and to benefit the industry as a whole. And Water Start's a great way for us to accomplish that. Wow. So basically, Water Start brings together the inventors and the innovations that these inventors are creating with water agencies or water companies that might possibly be able to benefit from those inventions. That's pretty impressive. And even before the new technology might be fully tested or proven in real world situations. Dave, so when you hear someone talk about research and development, typically that sounds pretty lofty. I I think that's something that our listeners probably have a hard time getting their arms around. And especially when we're talking about research and development in the water sector. So can you give our listeners some examples of new technologies that SNWA has tested and implemented through this Water Start program that are kind of practical uses here for the water industry? Yeah, absolutely, Bronson. We do have a traditional research and development function within SMWA that's recognized literally worldwide and is really looking at cutting edge research associated with emerging contaminants and various other aspects. But really what we're talking about today is the ability to take a problem and solve it with a new innovation that's already been proven for the most part. But we have to prove that in our processes to meet that need. And one of those that we have come across met a specific need that we have for a small system in the town of Searchlight. We operate the water treatment system in Searchlight as part of the Las Vegas Valley Water District. And one of the constituents that they deal with is arsenic. And arsenic needs to be removed from the well water that is pumped out of the ground. Typically, in doing the analysis for arsenic, you would have to go and do what's called a grab sample. So we'd have to send people out. We would, after the arsenic has been removed through the treatment process, we have to verify that there is no arsenic in the water that's been reduced down to very, very low levels. And our folks would have to drive out to Searchlight, take a sample, bring it back to the lab, and then they would have to go through all of the analytical work, which can literally take days to accomplish in order to get that result so that we can make sure that the water is safe to drink and being able to be used. That was a problem that we wanted to try to resolve, even though doing that keeps us in compliance with the Safe Drinking Water Act. So we came across a company called Ketos. And Ketos uses a product called their shield. And what that does is that allows us to be able to put that at the end of the process and analyze for arsenic to make sure that we're in compliance all the time. So that if we ever had a problem with the process, if we ever had a breakthrough or whatever, we could immediately shut that process down and prevent any of that water to go to customers. And so that's really exciting for us because, you know, the EPA standards for arsenic are about 10 parts per billion, which is really, really, really low. And our treatment technology is very sophisticated to be able to remove that. But we wanted to have that additional layer of safety and protection to make sure that we knew all the time what that measurement was. And so we're using that application in our process. So we took that through Water Start's process. We piloted it. And right now it's in our full scale operation. Just a great example of how a problem statement turned into a pilot that was funded by Water Start and Las Vegas Valley Water District and then an implementation in the actual process to benefit rate payers. And really, that's the water start model. Wow, Dave, that is pretty impressive. And it's good to hear that there is treatment that is taking place in Searchlight to ensure that they've got high quality water. But I think our listeners, when they hear the word arsenic, you know, you think of an Agatha Christie novel or maybe an old spy movie where One spy is slipping the arsenic into the tea in order to knock off the other spy. Can you just explain to our listeners a little bit more about how you ensure the quality of drinking water supplies here in Southern Nevada? And and I guess more specifically, does Las Vegas have arsenic in its water? No, that's a great question, Bronson. And when you think about arsenic, it does sound kind of scary and Agatha Christie-esque, as it were. 
But really what it is, is it's a naturally occurring mineral that's in the water. So arsenic ends up getting taken up in the water that's pumped out of the ground. And so you have to be able to deal with it, especially in water stressed communities where you really the only source is well water. Um, and it's pretty common throughout the United States for people to use groundwater and then have to treat and remove the constituents. But just to give you some perspective, that amount of arsenic, that 10 uh, parts per billion that I was referring to, that's like 10 cents on $10 million or like 10 drops of water in an Olympic sized swimming pool. You know, it's a really, really small amount, but it's an amount that we have to stay under to meet the Safe Drinking Water Act requirements. The answer to the second part of your question is, do we have that in the Las Vegas Valley Water District or the Southern Nevada Water Authority's water that we serve to the public? And the answer is no, that's not something we treat for. That's not something that we have to deal with. Those are surface waters and those arsenic levels are not of concern in those sources. But we do monitor for more than 160 different regulated and unregulated contaminants in the water that we provide. And just as this example, like we're talking about with Ketos, innovations that we can utilize to be able to protect public health are at the first and foremost of our agenda with respect to these solutions. So these sensors appear to be working and the Water Authority was able to help Ketos test it out in a real world environment. Did the pilot test help the company get their product out into the water world? Yeah, it did. That's one of the really fun things about the model that we've set up, where we start out by making the needs of the water agencies and the large consumers the focus and figure out how to help them, that when we're able to do that, as a result, it also helps the tech companies. And so Ketos, they had not been active in the drinking water industry. They had really started up with food and beverage and agriculture as their focus. But them hearing through Water Start's search to support SNWA on this need hearing that there was a need in the water sector helped support them in coming into the water industry. And by coming in, working with Water Start and our members, they not only got the chance to deploy one of their products and solutions, but to learn how the water industry works by helping you know, Water Start supporting them, learning how procurement works, right? Uh, learning how utility organizations are structured so they know who do they reach out to you know, in order to find the next opportunity within the industry. That's a really fulfilling result of our work as well. As an example, because the opportunities that that we had working with SNWA, Ketos, they've actually set up an office in Nevada now because they've found opportunities here working with SNWA and others in the state. So there's even economic development benefits that are going back to the community the virtuous cycle even keeps going because one of the other risks that public water agencies face in in using these new technologies is the risk that three years down the road, when they want to upgrade the system or buy new filters or upgrade the software, that this small startup might not be in business any longer, right? And they've got to go back to the drawing board and find some other solution. Our approach where we help deploy these things. We share the results, both successes and the lesson learns throughout our community. That just sets companies like Ketos up to have more credibility and find new opportunities sooner, because if they're successful, we'll continue to be successful, and the rest of the water industry could be successful as well in solving these challenges with really new and innovative solutions. So the Water Authority has tested technologies to ensure the safety of drinking water, but I know that the Las Vegas Valley Water District has also tested and implemented technologies through Water Start that were more focused on the management of the water distribution system and helping ensure that the water deliveries that are occurring are done in a very reliable and even more efficient way. So Dave, can you talk a little bit about What are some of the things that the Las Vegas Valley Water District has looked at? And more specifically, uh, this pilot project with a company called Ecologics. Ecologics is actually a company, one of the first ones that we came alongside as part of the Water Start process. 
The water district has about 1.6 million residents and about 6,500 miles of pipeline. So we have a lot of underground infrastructure to be responsible for. And as I mentioned before, we are, have been in drought for over 20 years. So every drop of water that we lose into the ground is super meaningful to us. So we came alongside an organization called Ecologics, and what they do is they have a technology that allows us to be able to essentially find underground leaks without actually having to go into the pipeline, and that's called a non-invasive approach. Basically, what they do is they use sound waves to be able to pinpoint where those leaks are. So you can imagine with 6,500 miles worth of pipeline that's buried, being able to find underground leaks with really, really high accuracy helps to minimize the amount of excavation that we have to do, disruption to roads and streets, and all of those types of things. And it helps the Las Vegas Valley Water District to be one of the most efficient utilities in the world, literally, in being able to deliver water. Our leakage rate is among the best in the world. And the ecologics technology that we adopted is a big part in helping us to get uh, to that point. So Dave, when you talk about leakage rates and that gets referenced within the water industry, can you just give our listeners a little better understanding of what's good and what's bad when it comes to leakage rates and, and why the Las Vegas Valley Water District is so good in this area? That's a great question, Bronson. And let me elaborate a little bit on that. With 6,500 miles worth of pipeline, you can imagine that it literally is impossible to prevent all leakage. And so what we try to do is to put a tremendous amount of resource into keeping that leakage rate just as low as we possibly can. And installations like the Ecologix project help us to be able to monitor those pipelines and pinpoint when we have leakage and where it's located so that we can be as effective and as timely as possible in getting out there and dealing with those uh, problems. So, Dave, we have heard, just to your point there, we have heard that communities back east have high leakage in their system. These are old pipes. They've been in the ground for a long time. And here in southern Nevada, my understanding is we really don't compare to those other communities. They're losing quite a bit of water through their pipeline network. But here in southern Nevada, our pipeline network is pretty tight. Is that correct? Yeah, it really is, Bronson. We've been working very, very hard to keep that leakage rate, that what we call unaccounted for water, to a level that is below 5%. And just to give you some perspective, 5% is absolutely world-class and puts us at the very top of the list with respect to how tight our system is and how few leaks we actually have. Because as I mentioned earlier, with respect to the drought situation and the value of water that we have in this community, we've got to do everything we possibly can, including the implementation of innovative projects like Ecologics to minimize our leakage rates. But yeah, we are absolutely doing fantastic as a community. So I can imagine, you know, customers would appreciate this because the last thing they want to have to deal with is a road shut down because of a big water main break and that impacts traffic and their day. And so you don't want to have to shut down a portion of, say, the Las Vegas Strip during a busy weekend because of that. So using technologies like ecologics and finding those leaks while they're small so you can repair them before they become a big nuisance makes a lot of sense for a lot of reasons, including keeping the water in the pipe and not having it gush out onto the street where it goes to waste. And Nate, what happens if SNWA or the water district tests a new technology and determines it doesn't work as planned? If a pilot doesn't work out, the technology companies still benefit because WaterStart helps to coordinate feedback from our members to the company to help them improve as they go forward. It's really interesting. We've now funded with our members 34 different pilot projects. And about a third of those have been successful where our members have gone on after the pilot to keep using those technology solutions. Those pilots that are not successful have also turned out to be really valuable for the tech companies. The, the majority of the time when the technology company doesn't move ahead to a full deployment, it's because of work they need to do with their business 
and their service offerings rather than necessarily some specific technical ability that they have to add on to their solution. There's a lot of value to that, to having companies get that advice like, hey, if we have a problem, we really need you to answer the phone if it doesn't work, like immediately. You know, these are just basic coaching and support consultations that are really valuable for these companies to grow in the long term and and be successful in other places if they're not through our program. That's good to hear. So the innovator that is providing this new technology through WaterSmart that's being pilot tested by the water agency, that innovator is getting feedback from the user that might help them shore up or make some tweaks to some of what they're doing or some of their processes to maybe make it even more beneficial to the user and to the water industry as a whole. It sounds like a really good partnership. Dave, can you tell us a little bit about one of the technologies that we've tested here in Southern Nevada and implemented as part of our regular operations because the technology was really the solution that we needed. Can you uh, just share with us one of those kind of technologies? Yeah, absolutely. I've got a, a good kind of case study that happened a few years ago. We ended up having about three different mains break within a relatively short period of time in an area that we were trying to really figure out why that could be happening was unusual for our system. Our staff kind of suspected that it was due to really short duration pressure spikes that are called transients, okay? And I'm talking about very high pressures, uh, in some cases higher than the design pressure for the pipeline, and really, really small durations in time, you know, less than a second. And so we started to look for a solution to try to identify that because at that point in time, we didn't have any pressure indicators that were sensitive enough to be able to, uh, to find these transients. And so we reached out to Waterstart with this challenge, and we were introduced to a company called Sirenex. And Sirenex makes intelligent water and wastewater pipeline monitoring equipment, which really does a great job, we found out. Their technology has a sensor that is about the size of a paperback book. You put it on the service line for a fire hydrant, and it gives you continuous pressure readings for that particular location. Now, you take and you add multiple of these in different areas within the pipeline system, And you really start to be able to paint a picture of what's happening. And what we found was, even though the Las Vegas Valley Water District does a fantastic job of planning, our infrastructure has grown so rapidly in the water district that there were operations that would occur, like valve shutting, pumps that were starting up, et cetera. And when certain sequences of operation would occur, it would cause these pressure spikes. And so what Sierra Nexus technology allowed us to do was to tell where those were happening and then to correlate those with operations that were happening in the system. And within a really short period of time, we found out exactly what was happening. And literally, with just a change in our operation, which added no cost, we were able to remove those pressure transients and really extend the useful life of our equipment. So that's a great example of a project that we were introduced to. We piloted it and found that first problem. And now we've implemented this more broadly in our process and really have a great way to tell if these pressure transients are occurring, which ends up resulting in us being more efficient, effective, and saving money for the rate pair. So that's pretty cool when you have such a success that comes out of some of this innovative technology. It must be gratifying to test out this sort of technology and provide feedback that helps our water agencies and water users solve industry problems. As we all know, when pipes last longer, operation costs go down and customers pay less on their water bills over time. Nate, can you tell us about any current testing or partnerships that are being considered for the near future? Absolutely. I mean, the first one that I think is is really exciting is happening with SNWA. I mean, you guys continue to be leaders in our group, and we are getting ready to co-fund the largest pilot project that we've ever done with any of our members focused on this new idea of a smart water network. And this is a, a really important idea that SNWA is leading the industry on that'll bring together data from all sorts of new sensors, kind of like what we've been 
um, talking about throughout the whole podcast, but how do you integrate all that new data in order to forecast what the operations should be in order to better optimize management of the whole system in a really intelligent way? Other new and exciting directions that Waterstart is going is our membership is growing. We were really excited a year ago to bring uh, Metropolitan Water District to Southern California on as a member. And since they came on, they have just been really, really hard at work deploying technologies related to a variety of things that in spaces that we've not worked with before. And one of those areas is monitoring levee conditions in the Sacramento Bay Delta, uh, which is a really fascinating opportunity for us to go and work in those kind of settings. I think one of the other things that's really exciting right now is we've recently had McDonald's join. And that's a whole new frontier for us as well in supporting large corporations and helping them become more innovative as water really does become a strategic priority for them throughout their supply chain as well as their operations. So a lot of new exciting areas that Water Start's been able to start working in. Dave, what other benefits does Water Start bring to the Southern Nevada Water Authority and the Las Vegas Valley Water District? One of the things that Water Start does that's really valuable to the water sector is to bring utilities together and define what those challenges are. Because I have found in my experience that the problems that we're trying to solve are really not all that different than many other communities. By being able to solve those challenges in a meaningful way and then share that information really is beneficial to the overall water community. And as far as sharing that information, WaterStart has developed a a channels platform, which literally will take a case study for each of the pilots that are performed, and it will share those with others that are in the WaterStart umbrella. And uh, it allows you as a water utility to be able to go in and see how did that pilot go that Metropolitan Water District of Southern California did? How did that pilot that Anglian Water in the UK did? And how did that pilot maybe in Queensland and Australia, how how did that go so that you're not reinventing the wheel with respect to these technologies? Many of them are very, very promising when you first take a look at them. But by sharing that information, it really benefits us. It minimizes the amount of time that we spend evaluating technologies for various solutions. And literally, we've looked at hundreds of opportunities. And through this channel's platform, it has been a real benefit to our innovation process. Well, Dave, I'm glad you brought up that channel's platform, because I know in the past I've I've heard, Nate, Nate, you and I have discussed before, I believe you've described Waterstart as kind of an innovation hub, connecting the innovators with the water utilities or the agencies that might be able to use those innovations to solve challenges or problems. So, Nate, can you just talk a little bit about what do the innovators need to do to get on board with Waterstart or what do the water agencies need to do who want to have access to those innovators through Waterstart? Dave did such a great job kind of highlighting, you know, the value of water agencies or large consumers getting involved in the association. And if anybody's interested in that, head to our website, waterstart.com. You'll see there's a, a link to the membership program and what the benefits are, how you join. We've got two different tiers so that the program's really accessible to different size agencies. So would love to hear from other agencies that are looking to solve problems and would be really excited to get them involved. If you're a solution provider, go to that same website, waterstart.com, and you'll see on there the link to channels, just like what Dave was mentioning. And you can go in there and you can set up a profile talk about what is the solution that you provide, where is your company based, what are you interested in accomplishing, you'll see that there's a list of all the different priorities we've identified with all of our different members. You can actually align your solution with one of those. It will alert our team that, hey, somebody's reached out with a new possible solution for this need of our members, and we can follow up. We regularly post requests for proposals. And if you set up that profile, 
you will get notice whenever those RFPs come out. It's roughly every quarter. You can respond, send us a pitch about how to come in and support our members. And Bronson, if you don't mind, I'd also love to do a call out to any of the foundations or any of those impact investors that are trying to figure out how can they support more innovation in the water sector to help us address some of these big challenges around climate change, population change. We're always looking to welcome new sponsors into our community to help us run these programs and support our members. So again, head to our website. There's a a specific page for those types of folks, and we'd love to visit with people if they're interested in getting involved. Dave and Nate, I mean, this is fascinating stuff. And, And I don't think that a lot of us really think about the amount of technology and innovation that goes into ensuring that every time we as Southern Nevadans turn on the tap, that that demand gets met. That's a lot of technology, a lot of innovation, a lot of work goes into doing that. And it's really important for the water industry to ensure that that is done efficiently, that is done with high reliability. And ultimately, these kinds of new technologies can help ensure that efficiency, reliability, and safety of drinking water. Thank you so much, Nate and Dave, for joining us here on the Water Smarts podcast and sharing a little bit about the work you're doing with Water Start, whether that's here in Southern Nevada or with agencies around the world, Water Start, increasing innovation in the water sector. Nate and Dave, thanks so much for joining us here on Water Smarts. Well, a big thank you to Crystal and Bronson. Always great to be here, guys. Thanks a lot. The Water Smarts podcast is brought to you by the Southern Nevada Water Authority, which reminds you to follow the mandatory seasonal watering restrictions. It's the law. You can find your assigned watering days on snwa.com. Remember, watering outside your assigned watering days or letting water run off your property are considered water waste and could result in a water waste fine. Find more information about water waste, how to prevent it, and how to report it on snwa.com, which has links to each member agency's water waste hotlines and online forms. Or, if you're a customer of the Las Vegas Valley Water District or City of Henderson, you can download their apps on your mobile device. The apps make it easy to report water waste on the spot. Stopping water waste and following the mandatory watering restrictions are two of the most important actions we can take in Southern Nevada to protect our water supply. Keep water on your property and make sure you know when to water. Well, Crystal, another good episode here on Water Smarts. It was pretty cool to hear about all the new technologies that Water Start is bringing to the table and how that's benefiting the water industry. Yeah, I always learn something new and it's it's good to hear that there's a, an outlet for people out there, all the brilliant people that come up with these concepts and have the technology and the innovation, but just don't know how to get started. So it's pretty cool that Waterstar exists for that reason. Technology helps us in many ways and it sounds like it's doing a lot of great things for the water industry. Yeah, and one more thing, right? If it's doing great things for the water industry, then that gets passed along to the customers and those of us that are dependent upon the water resources and the water infrastructure in order to, you know, use water throughout the day. I mean, water, you need it to live, am I right? (laughs) Yeah, we definitely do. Well, that's it for this episode here on Water Smarts. We hope you will subscribe and listen next time. Don't forget, you can send us questions at watersmarts at snwa.com or just go to snwa.com and you'll find us on the contact page. Send us a question and hey, we'll get back to you with an answer and you might even hear your question on the air. Thanks so much for joining us and we'll see you here next time on Water Smarts. Water Smarts.